This is the lightest 3D printed airplane on the market. This is a Cessna 170. This comes in at 75 grams ready to fly. This is under the FAA 250 gram rule, so you guys can fly this plane anywhere. This airplane's pretty cool because this airplane goes way, way back. The first time I ever tried to build this, I actually built a Gillos 170, the Balsa one. I tried to convert it to RC and uh, a huge disaster, never really got off the ground. I don't even think I ever threw it on the scale to check the weight on that thing. A little bit of a crash and broke the wing. And then the second time I tried to build this was the first time I ever 3D printed an airplane. I CAD drew a timber and it was way too heavy. It was out of regular plastic. Oh. And now it leads us to this, a 75 gram uh, Cessna 170. I put all this detail into this airplane. Uh, this is designed to fly anywhere you want to. Uh, make sure it's a nice calm day out, no wind, or fly indoor. This is a really cool indoor plane to you know do a really awesome paint job and take it in and fly it. Flying around a small airplane like this is really nice and relaxing to take out to the park. Uh, it just flies on a one cell battery. It is brushless uh, setup that I have in this airplane, so the runtime I've flown on one battery for 10 minutes. Yeah, when it's calm winds out, it's really fun to fly. Just a little three-channel airplane, it's like a lot easier to keep it in tight. Yeah, uh, this is nice and easy to fly. It's only a three-channel airplane. Uh, the rudder's hooked up on the aileron channel and then the elevator's here. So the battery uh, is just Velcroed around the bottom down here. Uh, and then I have a, the lightest weight receiver and ESC that I can get inside the airplane right now. So that's why the battery has to be quite a bit farther forward. Um, if you have a little bit heavier receiver, I'll talk about in the build video. If you have a little bit heavier receiver, then you can move the battery back a little bit. It'll have a little bit more nose weight to it. Uh, the CG marks are right here on the bottom, just right in front of where the spar is at. And it says CG on this one side. And you just put your fingers on both sides of that. And then make sure you get that CG set. Even if your weights aren't right, as long as your CG is set, that's the most important part. If you look, the CG points almost where these fuel tanks are at. And most of the 3D printed material is behind the CG. So if, you're, if your weights aren't right, then you're gonna be pretty tail heavy. So if you're tail heavy, then you're gonna to have to add a bigger battery, maybe a little bit of nose weight, or else uh, use a heavier receiver in the front here, like what I'll talk about in the build video. That was awesome. This is a really fun airplane, you guys. Let me show you guys how to build it. Okay, guys, so when printing out an airplane this small, the most important thing is the weight. You have to keep the weight down as much as possible. When the saying is bigger flies better, well, it does fly better, but it, there's a lot more variation in what you can do with a bigger airplane. It doesn't matter if you use plastic gear servos or metal gear servos, eh, 10 grams isn't really gonna matter too much. On an airplane that weighs around 100 grams, 10 grams is 10% of the weight. So if you can shave off 20 grams, you just shave off 20% of the weight of the airplane. The very first prototype weighed right about 100 grams, ready to fly. Uh, and it flew pretty well, but I wanted to shave it down as much as possible. This one flew at 82 grams ready to fly. And then uh, I shaved off even more weight uh, for this final build here. So with this one, I did include all of the weights on the build sheet here. So you guys can try to get as close as possible. I do recommend getting a small scale for this build. On my normal scale, this cowling weighs one gram. On the smaller scale, it weighs 2.2. As you get up in larger pieces, the normal scale does get more accurate. 
the first thing I'd recommend you guys do is go ahead and import left wing one as a 3MF file. If you do this, the part will be sliced correctly and you want to adjust as many settings. If not, you just gotta go down to the others tab, select spiralized face mode, go in here, set all your top and bottom layers to zero. Go into your quality tab, this is the most important part. Make sure all these are set to zero. That way it shows the infill that I drew inside the part so the part will print correctly. All your other settings are gonna be right here. You wanna change your flow rates and your temperature. This is the normal settings that I use. I use 0.6 and 265 for my Bamboo Lab printer. So I'm gonna go ahead and print this out just with my normal settings. As you see, the part quality comes out really good. Everything's good, but the weight is 10 grams, which is normally pretty good. But for this airplane, we're trying to save a lot of weight. Our goal is six grams. A quick way to get this settings figured out is move this left wing part down below the build plate so you make yourself a little test part. Now you go in here, your flow rates, and you can just adjust these. You can just go 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.45, and just keep adjusting these settings until you get the quality of part that you're looking for. This is all going to depend on what printer and what film that you guys are using. So I just kept track of all the different settings and had a bunch of different test parts. Uh, the final product that I came up with for this airplane was 0 0.4 and 265 using a Bamboo Lab printer and 3D Lab Print PLA. You can see this one is super thin, it's too thin. So then I had to go back and add a little bit more flow rate. You can also check the wall thickness. The normal wall thickness was 0.52 and you're shooting for 0.37. I did print this out on my Anycubic Viper also to test it out. For that one, I had 235C and 35% flow using uh, Kira software. Now you can see how this windshield has a little bit of an overhang and there's some holes in that one. So I actually had to increase the flow rate a little bit to 0.45 with 265C for the cowling and that fuselage part. And if you get frustrated with uh, adjusting the settings, just think that you could be building balsa and learning how to cover this in monocoating and all the other things that come along with building a balsa plane. Now that we have all the print settings figured out and we get the entire airplane printed out, let's go ahead and start work on the build. We're gonna go ahead and start on the wing for this project just because it's so easy to assemble and then we'll move into the fuselage. In order to get left wing number two to fit into left wing number one, you just have to remove a little bit of this plastic here just so that way it works with the trailing edge and that flap detail on the left wing one part. Just go ahead and grab any roll of filament, just 1.75 millimeter diameter, and we'll go ahead and cut a couple pieces just to use this as an alignment guide to attach the left wing and the right wing together. Now you can throw this on the scale, it should weigh 24.3 grams. Now we'll go ahead and set that aside and start working on the fuselage. Now this part here, the support piece, see that middle piece, it's actually angled a little bit. You want it to be angled up. Uh, and it does have little tabs there to fit properly in there and it will not sit fully down in there It sticks out just a little bit so that way you can't push it too deep inside of the fuselage Now I'll go ahead and work on this so these little holes there or these TPU hinges these are really small TPU hinges So just make sure that you wipe off any excess glue you want these to be very easy to move I used an X-Acto blade to clean out the hole that this TPU hinge goes into, or else you can use a really small flathead screwdriver and stick it down in there just to make sure that that opening is opened up enough so that these hinges fit down into the control surface. Then we'll go ahead and use this tool. I'll grab a 0.64 millimeter music wire and bend this to fit inside that tool. Make sure that this is perfect or else the TPU hinges will not align with the uh, slots in the tail. So you can dry fit this first without the glue just to make sure that the hinges line up on the tail portion and then we'll glue that right into place. And again just a tiny amount of glue for this. This is even way too much. Once I go ahead and put that on there uh, I'll take a napkin and clean off the excess glue so this moves very easily. Now there's a little slot here. You wanna take your exact blade, don't cut your fingers, and slip that little slot. That'll open up that channel where this wire will go in there for the tail wheel. This is 0.64 millimeter music wire again. We'll make a little Z-bend, and you might have to open up that 
hole on the tail wheel, it's very small hole there, so I, you might have to drill that out just a little bit to get that wire to fit in there. But you just want it to be nice and tight fit. And then we'll glue the rudder into place, and then again, just make sure everything moves very easily. If this does not move easily, then your push rods are going to be bending and the servos aren't going to be strong enough and everything else, so just make sure that's really easy to move. Again, these holes for the tires are a little bit small, so you want to drill them out just a little bit. That I just left them like that, so that way you guys can use wire or screws or whatever method you want to to attach those tires to the landing gear. Now we'll go ahead and remove uh, this part of the fuselage. Now, if you guys don't think uh, you know every little bit of weight matters, and you throw this on the scale, it weighs 0.5 grams. Now, this whole part here, the fuselage, should weigh 23.9 grams. Okay, now we're ready for electronics, and electronics is where you really determine how much this airplane is going to weigh or ready to fly weight. So I'll give you a few different options. Easier is actually the heaviest option, and then uh, the lightest weight option is, it takes a little bit more work. I offer two different motor mounts. Uh, one motor mount is for 1.7 gram servos, and one is for two gram servos. It just all depends on what servos you can get in your area. Obviously, 1.7 grams, if you can get a hold of those small servos, then use those. If you, if you can only get two gram servos, then you can go ahead and use two gram servos. For the motor, I use the MC1106 Alpha motor. You can use the MC1108 Alpha uh, motor. It just weighs a little bit more and it sticks out just a little bit more out of the front of the cowling. So the real difference will come with the receiver. So basically I have three different options. One on the far left is a micro receiver with the built-in brushless ESC. The other two options, you have to add the five amp brushless ESC with it. With the Spectrum receiver, make sure you take the case off. Just the receiver itself weighs 4.2 and the case weighs 4.1. This is the easiest plug and play setup that you'll find. Use an off-brand receiver with this one cell five amp brushless ESC. And then the brushless motor will just plug right into that ESC. So with the ESC, the receiver and the motor, it's 12.5 grams. This is what I used, uh, a, the micro receiver. It's only 1.5 grams, but as you'll see here, uh, it takes a little bit more work than just the plug and play option. So I go ahead and glue on, these are the 1.7 gram servos. Now you will need this 1.25 JST plug. It does not come included in the receiver, so you'll have to get that extra. Uh, and then I went ahead and just cut the wires there for the brushless motor and solder them directly onto the board of the receiver. You will have to do a directional check on that motor, so when you solder those on there, chances are you'll probably solder it wrong and you'll have to unsolder two of the wires and switch them to make sure the direction of the motor spins correctly. Now we're going to go ahead and set up the push rods. I use 0.8 400mm carbon fiber rod. The wire, the same diameter, is 1.4 grams. A carbon fiber is 0.3. We're going to go ahead and make a Z-bend here with 064 millimeter music wire. Cut a little piece of heat shrink and we'll put the heat shrink onto the carbon fiber and slide that Z-bend that you just made right there and then we'll just heat that to collapse the heat shrink. Don't make this connection too long because there is that kind of that firewall where these uh, push rods go into the airplane and if you make that Z-bend too long it will make contact with that. Uh, with this part right here of the fuselage. Now I'll just go ahead and feed these push rods down into the fuselage and then we'll go ahead and glue on the cowling. Now we'll flip over the airplane and we'll use the heat gun again to open up an area for the wire for the battery connection. Uh, you can use a X-Acto blade and cut this out too but using a hot knife or that soldering iron makes a nice little opening and it keeps the plastic a little bit more intact right there. To 
finish up the push rods. Uh, we'll go ahead and make a Z bend again in that 0.64 millimeter music wire and they'll make a U shape. That will allow us to have a mechanical trim right there at the control surface rather than having to use a servo. Use your hobby knife to make a small hole in the control horn here and then go ahead and set those metal wires that you just made. And these carbon rods are just a little bit too long, so we'll cut those down just a little bit, put your heat shrink on there, and then we'll use a soldering iron to collapse the heat shrink again. Make sure when you're using that hot knife or soldering iron that you don't melt the plastic of the airplane. Check out how nice and clean that looks. Oh, it looks so good. All right, now we'll go ahead and do a control check, make sure everything works correctly, it's moving in the right direction. Now it's off to the paint booth, aka the kitchen table, so the wife can do this awesome paint job. Look how good this turned out. Now I'll go ahead and just use glue to attach the wing to the top of the fuselage. And then we'll flip it over and glue on the struts. This plane was so much fun to build, you guys. This was such a cool project to work on. All right, guys, that was a really fun build. Uh, this was just a really cool airplane to build. Lots of years went into this. It looks super simple, obviously, but a lot of experience went into this. Uh, I'm really proud of this one. This is a really fun plane to build, and uh, lots of different prototypes I got went into building this, and uh, lots of flights. So hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys want to build one, and uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next build.